Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Math with Business Applications. I'm Amy Flicksteiner, your instructor for this course. Today, we are going to be finishing up Chapter 10. This is Section 3 of Chapter 10. We are currently in Unit 6. This is our last section, although not the last presentation. This section as well is split into two parts. We're going to be covering Part 1. Uh, we're looking at simple interest in notes, and today we're going to look at understanding what a promissory note is. Um, we're going to hold the discounting part oh, for the next lecture. So today is Chapter 10, Section 3. This is Part 1. Ta -da. Um, and we're going to look at bank notes and effective interest rates. So our goals for this particular presentation. I want to be sure that you understand the vocabulary. This includes words such as promissory note, simple discount note. What is a bank discount? What are proceeds? What does it mean when we talk about the face value of a note? And what is the effective interest rate? We're going to have you calculate a bank discount. We want you to know who would receive it and how would it be used. Why would one be used? Why would somebody use a bank discount? We want you to calculate the proceeds on a note. We want you to be clear on who gets or receives the proceeds. And is it always less than a loan? Like how do the proceeds compare to the actual loan amount? And then we're going to have you calculate the effective interest rate we want you to know or understand when it is used and why it is important, all right? Promissory notes and discount. So a promissory note is basically a promise to pay back the lender. It is a promise to pay. It's part of the reason why it's known as a promissory note. The note is we say a negotiable. That means that people can make offers and you can take offers from different people, persons, and banks. Those notes can also be transferred or sold to different lenders, um, also individuals and companies. The notes are generally speaking a short term that is less than a year. They're usually simple interest as well. Almost always ordinary, occasionally exact, but almost always ordinary interest. Um, the ones we're going to talk about are going to be interest bearing. Now, what's the difference? Well, you may have had to sign a promissory note if you've ever borrowed money from your parents. Maybe that's an old school thing. But as I believe I may have told you before, my mother is an accountant. So on the couple of occasions in my life, particularly when I was in college, and I had to have my parents pay for something and they were lending me the money, um, I signed promissory notes. <laughs> I'm not saying your parents would do that today, but just know you could, okay? Uh, promissory notes do not need a bank to occur. Um, promissory notes can be done between businesses. They can be done between individuals like me and my mother. And uh, anybody, anybody at all can use a promissory note. If you lend money to your best friend, you can offer them a promissory note. Uh, interest bearing versus non-interest bearing. Basically, like I said, your mom might not charge you interest. The people that you just bought the pizza oven from might. Okay. Here's an example of a promissory note. This is a promissory note, and I'm using this one because this particular image is from 1871. So promissory notes are not something that is <coughs> brand new. It's not something new to banking. It's been around for, uh, what would that be, 150 years? So, at least. All of the pieces of information on this promissory note are still available on the promissory note today. You can see the date of the promissory note. You can see the number of days. By the way, that's not 50. That's 60. Cursive. Um, they're going to pay John A. All at the People's Union Bank, $3,200. That's what their promissory note, without defalcation for value received. That basically means they're not defrauding anybody. They've stated what they need the money for, and that's what they're going to use the money for. Um, you can see in the lower left-hand corner, there's a 1.60. I believe that is the interest rate. So what we have on here is the date of the loan, 
We know it's 60 days. We know who they're paying. We know how much it's for. And we know the interest rate. That's everything you need, pretty much. Modern day promissory notes have all the same information. They've got a date, they've got terms, that's how many days. They've got what's known as the face value or the amount of the loan. They've got the maturity date. That's the only thing we did not see on the other loan is we didn't see the due date. Um, they just said 60 days. We think we found the interest rate and we know who made it. All the same information. We want to talk today about a specific type of promissory note, which is known as a simple discount note. A simple discount note has very similar calculations to the simple interest loans we've done before. It is significantly different from promissory notes uh, we've looked at, and here is why. When a business applies for a loan at face value, that is the amount of money that they need, they're approved for a simple discounted note. Now the difference with a discounted note is that the bank takes the interest that they're charging first. They take the interest off the top of the loan. This is known as a bank discount. The remaining amount is then given to the borrower. This is known as the proceeds. Now, is the proceeds going to be more or less than the face value of the loan. Everything we've done up to this point, the promissory notes we discussed before, you paid all of the interest at the end of the term. So if it was a 60 day loan, you paid everything you borrowed plus the interest at the end of 60 days. With a simple discount note, and the key word here is discount, the interest is still charged the same. It's still calculated the same, but they take it off the top of the note. In my little graphic, the guy is crying because they're taking his money before they give it to give him the loan. This means that the borrow, borrower needs to consider the amount that they're asking for at the time of their application. So, Basically, if you go in and borrow $5,000 to, say, purchase a vehicle, they're only going to give you maybe $4,800. You owe $200 interest, but instead of paying that at the end of the term, they're going to take it from you right up front. There are advantages to this, and there are disadvantages to this. Okay. The simple discount note, just to be clear, the interest is deducted from the principal at the beginning of the term, so before they get their money. Because you're paying off interest at the beginning, you actually don't get to use all of the money that you've borrowed. So if you needed $5,000 and that's what you asked for, like I said before, you may only get $4,800. So what you want to do or what what's going to happen is you're going to end up with a higher interest rate than was stated. You thought you were paying $200 interest on a $500, $5,000 loan, but you're actually paying $200 interest on a $4,800 loan because you didn't get to use all $5,000. $5, well, you did. You just had to pay your interest off first. The part that the bank takes is the bank discount. This is the amount of interest that's charged on a discounted note. In order to calculate it, you have to do simple interest formula. So it's the face value of the loan, how much money you're asking for, times the interest rate, times time. Okay? It's just I equals PRT, but your principal is the amount that you've asked for, your interest rate is known as the discount rate, and your time is the same. The proceeds is the amount of money that the borrower actually gets to walk out the door with. So in order to calculate the proceeds, you need to know how much you asked to have, and then you've got to take off or dis, dis, dis what? Subtract. <laughs> you have to take off or subtract the bank discount at the front. That's going to leave you with the proceeds. Your time here is going to be in years. Um, ordinary is always assumed. Uh, and your notes are generally given in terms of days. Notes are short term, so 
I always found this interesting that the biggest issuers of discounted notes are Freddie Mac and the federal home loan banks. If you want to know why we had a mortgage crisis, <laughs> this is probably a part of it, right? Okay, what's next? Come on. Oh, we're just being fancy here. There we go. So we've got a couple of problems to try. On the first one, Ron signs a $24,000 simple discount promissory note at the BN Bank. The discount rate was 14% and the net was made on February the 15th for 50 days. So here are some of the types of questions you could be asked. What are the proceeds that Ron will receive? Well, in order to know the proceeds, I need to calculate how much interest the bank is going to take off. That's known as the bank discount. And to calculate the bank discount, we're going to do the face value of the loan, that's the amount he's asking for, times the discounted rate times time. So we want to do 24,000 times 14% times the time, which is 50 out of 360. This is 466 with a repeating 6, 0.666666, however long you want to carry it out. Last one is a 7. The proceeds is the face value of the loan, the amount that he has asked for, and the bank discount. Because Ron has just been approved for a $24,000 simple discount note, but they're going to take that interest of $466.67, and they're going to get their money first. The bank takes their cut first. So we're going to take 24000 minus 466.67 to get $23,533.30. These are the proceeds. This is how much money Ron gets to walk away with. That means that the due date of this loan is February 15th, the day the loan is made, plus another 50 days. That would be, well, you're going to use your dating chart, right? You're going to use your, your days in a year. I am not. I'm going to say this is February 15th plus 50 days gets me February 65th. That does not exist. So February 65th, subtract the 28 days in February, and I'm going to get March 37th. That does not exist. There are 31 days in March, so I subtract 31 from 37, puts me into the next month, and I get April the 6th. And that's how I do it in my head. All right. Second example, on June 2nd, Jill signed a $65,000 simple discount promissory note at a rate of 16% interest for 125 days. What are the proceeds that Jill will receive? So in order to find proceeds, I've got to know what the bank discount is so I can give the bank their money first. So I'm going to do face value times the discounted rate times time. My face value is 65,000. Discounted rate is 16%. Time is 125 days out of 360. This gives me a bank discount of $3,611.11. The proceeds then is the face value or $65,000 minus that bank discount of 3611 So 65000 minus 3611 is $61,388.89. What is the due date of the loan? Once again, we're starting on June 2nd, and we're adding 125 days. That would be, well, I would actually probably use the dating chart on this one for 125 days, but I'm going to see if I can do it in my head. So June 2nd plus 125 days would be June 127th. That date does not exist. Uh, June has 30 days, so that would be the 97th. July has 31 days, that's the 66. August also has 31 days, so that's 35. So I'm at September 35th, which has, September has 30 days, so that's going to leave me with October the 5th. Whew, that was a rough one. I would, in a different world, have pulled out the days in the year chart to do that one. All right, so here's what we need to take a look at. Notice that Jill paid 16% interest 
on $65,000, but she actually didn't get to use $65,000. She barely got $61,000. What this does is it messes with the actual interest rate. When the amount of proceeds is lowered, in other words, when Jill gets to use less money, the true interest rate moves higher. That means she didn't really pay 16% interest rate. She paid a higher amount than that. Because when you lower the base, the interest rate has to be raised to compensate. It's called an indirect variation. When one goes low, we go high. You've heard that before, maybe, somewhere. All right. Effective interest rate. Let's see what we can do here. I'm going to click on this. There we are. Effective interest rate. So a simple... Discount note is a simple interest loan when the interest is taken again by the bank before they give you the funds. The borrower receives only those remaining funds known as the proceeds. This results in a higher interest rate than is stated in the paperwork. The proceeds, again, are the amount of money that a borrower receives at the time the discount note is made, and it's less than the face value of the note. Yes, the proceeds will always be less than the face value of that note. The effective interest rate, if you compare the bank discount rate, oh, no, sorry. If you compare the bank discount, that is the interest that's deducted first, to the proceeds, and it's required by law to be listed. You sometimes see this. If you've got a credit card, it'll say, you know, 24% interest, effective interest rate of 27.9. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's required to be listed if it has an effective or true interest rate. This is the actual interest rate charged on a discounted note, and it takes into account the fact that the borrower doesn't get the full amount of the principal. They don't get their full ask. Notice that the formula for effective interest rate is just what we were doing in 10.2. It's just the effective interest rate is equal to the interest divided by the principal times time. The only problem here is that our principal is not the face value of the loan, it's the proceeds on the loan. It's how much the person or the borrower actually got to take out of the building. What is the effective interest rate of a simple discount note that was made for $51,000 at a bank discount rate of 13% for a period of 270 days? Keeping in mind the previous formula, we need to be able to calculate the bank discount and the proceeds because those are the two pieces we need for an effective interest rate. So in order to calculate the bank discount, that's the face value of the loan times the interest times time, or 51,000 times 13% for 270 days out of 360. This is $4,972.50. That is our bank discount. The proceeds on this note would be the 51,000 minus that 49.7250 or $46,027.50. Our effective interest rate is that bank discount divided by the proceeds times time. So the 49,4972.50 divided by 46,027.50 times 270 over 360. Again, just like we did in the first part uh, on Monday's homework, you want to make sure that you're putting parentheses around that entire denominator or that you're figuring out what that denominator is first, keeping several decimal places, and then dividing the 49, 4,900. $4,972.50 by that number. When we do this, we get 0 0.14404321, which we now need to convert into a percent by either multiplying by 100 or moving your decimal point two places to the right. This gets us 14.4%. Notice, this interest rate is higher than our stated interest rate of 13%. The effective interest rate should be higher than your stated interest rate. Trying it again. 
What is the effective interest rate of a simple discount note for $1,800 at 8% for 30 days? Notice we have a very small amount of money for a very small amount of time. So it's only $1,800 and it's only 30 days. If we're going to find the effective interest rate, we need to know the bank discount and we need to know the proceeds. So our bank discount is the face value of the loan times the discount rate times time, or 1,800 times 8% 8 for 30 days out of 360. This works out to be a whopping $12. That means their proceeds would be 1,800 minus the $12, or 1,788. Now, notice in a short-term loan, this idea of taking the interest first, if it's a small amount of money, it's not going to make any difference. If I needed $1,800 and the bank said, we'll give it to you, but we're taking $12 interest off the top, so I was only going to get $1,788, it would be easier for me to replace that $12 than it would be to say no to the loan, right? They've kind of got you over a barrel here for 30 days and for $1,800. That could be rent and a car payment, and I'll find another way to come up with the $12 interest if I'm $12 short, right? It's only in a business with large amount of money that it becomes very difficult. All right, effective interest rate then is that bank discount of $12 divided by the proceeds times time, or 1788 times 30 out of 360. Be careful once again, and remember that you may need parentheses around that denominator if you're not getting the correct answer here. This gets us 0 0.0805. 36913, which we need to convert to a percent by moving the decimal point over two places. Notice that this gives us 8.05%. It's not more, but it's still, it's not more by much, I should say, but it's still more. This is still more than our stated interest rate of 8%. So, a couple of things. Our effective interest rate should always be more than the stated interest rate in the problem. The proceeds should always be less than the face value of the loan. Okay. As we review this, do you feel fairly confident in the vocabulary? Do you understand a promissory note and a simple discount note? Do you understand what a bank discount is? The proceeds on a loan. Do you understand what we mean when we talk about the face value? Can you find and calculate effective interest rate? What about a bank discount? Do you know who receives the bank discount? The bank. <laughs> Do you understand why a bank discount might be used? Can you calculate the proceeds of a note? Do you know who receives the proceeds? The borrower. Is it always less than the loan? Yes. Can you calculate the effective interest rate? Do you understand when it's used? Why is it important? Well, we didn't really talk a lot about that, but let me take a minute here. Effective interest rate is important because it can be very misleading. Some states have laws against like title loan companies, but title loan companies use this particular grift, if you know what a grifter is. They use this particular scam in order to get people in, right? You've got a title, a car title worth $1,000, but they're going to charge you a $30 handling fee. They're going to charge you a $150 for the application, and then they're going to take 12%, uh, $120 up front. So you've gone in for a $1,000 loan on your maybe $1,000 car, and right off the top, they're going to take $250 out of your loan, and you're only going to get $750. They're telling you you're only paying 12% interest, but in the end, you're really paying 25% interest because of everything they've taken from the beginning. So... That's why the effective interest rate is so important, and that's why it's important to be stated, because people can lure you in with lower interest rates when really it's quite a bit more. All right. 
extra practice. This is chapter 10, section three. There are review exercises at the end of your e-text. Um, I would suggest you do one through 15 and 21 through 27. If you have a physical copy of the book, I believe this is pages 327 and 330, or 327 through 330. There is a graded assignment available on WebAssign. This is called Chapter 10, Section 3, without discounting notes. Discounting notes is kind of a big deal. We're going to take care of that on Monday, but you might want to review the rest of the section. I got a story to tell. All right. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact your instructor, our embedded support personnel, the math center, and any tutors you might have available to you. We are all here to help, and we want to see you succeed. Thank you.